Well, today we've seen further evidence of the pure evil of the ISIL movement, which is now operating across uh, much of the Middle East. Uh, the beheading of a British aid worker is further demonstration that this particular terrorist group does not just do evil, but exults in doing evil. Uh, we also know that uh, uh, this is a terrorist group uh, which is reaching out to Australia uh, because there are at least 60 Australians that we know of that are working with terrorist groups in the Middle East uh, and at least 100 that we know of uh, here and abroad that are supporting uh, terrorist groups in the Middle East. Uh, this is not just an international security situation but it is a domestic security situation. Uh, as you know, uh, for some time now, the Australian government has been considering how best to respond to the ISIL movement uh, at home and abroad. Uh, I can advise that uh, we have, uh, within about the last 24 hours, uh, received a specific request from the United States government uh, to contribute forces to possible military action in Iraq. Uh, I can further advise that uh, on Friday night I had a conversation with the new Prime Minister of Iraq uh, who indicated to me that he would very much welcome uh, an Australian military contribution uh, to the restoration of uh, order and security uh, inside Iraq. Uh, so uh, National Security Committee of Cabinet uh, has met earlier today, uh, full Cabinet has also met uh, to discuss this matter and the government has decided to prepare and to deploy to the United Arab Emirates uh, a military force, uh, a military force that could, subject to further decisions, uh, contribute to military operations inside Iraq. Uh, the force will comprise up to eight Super Hornet aircraft uh, and an early warning and control aircraft, uh, an aerial refuelling aircraft, uh, and uh, a special forces contingent uh, that could act as military advisers to the Iraqi armed forces uh, or to the Peshmerga. Again, uh, I want to stress uh, that this is uh, an international coalition, not simply something that is uh, uh, an American-Australian operation. Uh, so far, there are uh, a number of countries, uh, Western and Middle Eastern, that have indicated that they are prepared to contribute to military operations inside Iraq. Uh, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Canada, Jordan, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates, as well as Australia. Again, I stress that this is essentially a humanitarian operation to protect millions of people in Iraq from the murderous rage of the ISIL movement. Uh, but if we are to protect people from ISIL, it is important to have the capacity to disrupt and degrade ISIL operations. Uh, again, I stress uh, that uh, this movement is neither Islamic nor a state. It is a death cult uh, reaching out to countries such as Australia. Uh, again, I stress that none of this has anything to do uh, with religion. None of this has anything to do uh, with communities here in Australia. This is about taking prudent and proportionate action to protect our country and to protect the wider world against an unprecedented terrorist threat. Uh, I do want to indicate that uh, on the 24th of September uh, I will be in New York uh, to attend the United Nations uh, Security Council, which will discuss uh, further measures uh, to deal with the ISIL menace. I should also indicate that uh, not only has the National Security Committee of the Cabinet and the full Cabinet uh, met to consider this matter today, but I have uh, uh, consulted with the Leader of the Opposition, 
uh, the Leader of the Opposition has offered the government uh, his uh, full support for the decision that we have taken today. I want to thank Mr Shorten for the approach that he's taken to this. It is right and proper that when it comes to national security, the government and the opposition should stand shoulder to shoulder, and that's exactly what has happened today.